Hey what's up guys, Tektine here and I'm back again with a brand new video. So before I begin, as always, if this is your first time on the channel, don't make it your last. Be sure to subscribe if you haven't already done so, and also leave a thumbs up, it helps out the channel more than you think, and I do greatly appreciate my supporters. So with that being said, today we're going to be talking about my experience as a user using the Motorola Razr 2023 model. And this is a phone that is MSRP at $699, but it did go on sale for around like $499 or $599. So keep that in mind, St keep on the lookout for the price of this phone because they do change a lot. With that being said, so my experience with this phone has been for the most part pleasant and enjoyable but there are some things that i wasn't really a big fan of let's go ahead and get into it beginning with the design itself obviously this is actually a well-built phone for the most part so i want to talk about the kind of quality and the material used so Motorola uses this kind of fake leather material that provides a really, really nice grip of the phone. So obviously, I'm the type of person that does put cases on their regular phones. This phone is kind of harder to put a case on, but there are cases available if you want one. But basically, it does provide a really nice grip, and I didn't really have any issues with it slipping or anything like that. So it was a grippy phone for the most part so holding it in the hand is really comfortable and it's very it's a very light phone so the, you do have also like a secondary display that for the most part i only used it to tell time i didn't use it for all that other extra stuff that motorola added if you're the type of person to use that extra stuff like voice recording or taking a quick picture or a timer or things like that you have it you can use it if you want to but me myself in the past two weeks i only found myself just looking at the time that's the only that's the only convenience and that's the only thing that I've used that secondary screen for. So for the most part it did work pretty well. And and if you look at the phone from the side, uh, if, as, I as I mentioned before, this is a really, really slim phone. So holding it in the hand was, a, like I said, a very enjoyable experience. I mean, it was just a light phone that, you know, it didn't feel like a bulky phone or a phone that would be uncomfortable to hold for a very long time. Even when you fold it shut, it will fold pretty much almost all the way shut. So it's really hard to see a gap, even if you want to find one. And speaking of the gap, so the hinge design itself is a very, very solid hinge. So I'm, I'm thankful thankful for it because Motorola did not cheap out on making a quality hinge in their kind of entry level foldable devices. So a very very quality hinge that is made out of metal for the most part. One of my concerns is this and this is where things kind of begin is the fact that there's a there, there's this part right here on the hinge that felt a little bit flimsy. Uh, I don't know if it's just my unit but yeah for some reason that that part scared me a little bit because you know i mean these phones at the end of the day they're not the most durable phones in the world they're very sensitive phones so they're a luxury they're very enjoyable but you got to be careful because the second that you mess the hinge up or the second that you get any sort of dust inside the hinge or anywhere else in the phone there goes your money so keep that in mind as far as the design goes it's pretty good for the most part but durability wise only time will tell how that will hold up so next up is the display itself and this is a POLED display that is a very high quality and i'm not gonna lie i found myself you know watching videos a lot on this phone now as a one-handed use yeah this phone is very light but it's just a tall display that it makes it a little bit difficult to reach the top if you want to look at your notification center so definitely one-handed use is a hit or miss for your bottom row apps you'll be fine for the top ones if you want to look at your notification and reach your bot your upper apps yeah nah it's just not going to happen with two with uh with just one hand so keep that in mind and the other thing that i want to talk about is the crease so the crease really didn't bother me i got used to it really really quick quicker than i thought i thought that it was going to be a bothersome and it's going to kill the experience it, it didn't so as for the quality of the display itself is a very high quality display um not not the best materials used because to achieve this kind of fold effect you do have to use plastic on the display which means that scratches are inevitable but for the most part for the most part as far as the experience comes from the display it has a really fast high refresh rate um it has a high quality display so an oled display it, i mean it hits all the it hits all the needs that you would want in a display all right uh, again the only downside that i have about this display two weeks later is not the experience because watching videos was just fun but it's just the fact that 
yeah it's it's very prone to scratches and there's just no way around it and you can't you you may be able the only thing that i would recommend is adding an extra you know plastic film screen protector in addition to the one that they you know provide with the phone which again they give you a warning not to remove it otherwise you're just going to go ahead and damage your display you don't want to be a part of that so now let's go ahead and switch the topic of conversation and talk about the camera experience and i'm not going to lie to you my expectations were not all that high. I'm currently still working on a full camera review, so stay tuned for that for a lot of more sample pictures. You'll be able to see what I mean in the camera review. But basically, the TLDR is this. So you have a main sensor and you have an ultra-wide sensor. And for the most part, the camera experience is fine. It's okay. Um, it's not really the greatest in the world. And I get it. It's a very thin phone that has a small camera sensor. But... It still is a camera that is usable. And the interface is just what you would expect from Motorola. Fast at taking pictures. Uh, in, some time, in some scenarios, it did hiccup between switching from the main sensor to the wide-angle sensor. But nothing too crazy. I mean, it wasn't really that bad. And you can shoot some quality full HD and 4K video. So keep that in mind. As far as the picture quality themselves, here's what I have to say about them off of the pictures that are found here. They're, the pictures look a little bit artificial. They're not really... So in some scenarios, they're vibrant, but in other scenarios, they just look artificial, especially when you're looking at HDR pictures. Mm, yeah, these photos are okay. They're not, you know, they're not going to be the greatest in the world, but in some scenarios, it did do a decent job, a better job than other scenarios. So this camera is a hit or miss for the most part. Stay tuned for the full review. You guys will be able to see exactly what I mean when you look at more sample pictures. Okay. So now let's go ahead and discuss the performance aspect of this phone. So this phone does not have the highest end chip that, you know, that Qualcomm provides. It does have kind of a mid-range chip. For the most part, the performance, from my experience, without getting too technical, was pretty good. So you get 128 gigabyte of storage, you get a nice amount of 8 gigabyte of RAM, you get the Qualcomm Snapdragon um, 7 Gen 1. So it's a media core processor. Uh, for the most part, it benchmarked a little bit higher than the Galaxy A54. So if that's the phone that you have, then that kind of gives you an idea of where this phone will be sitting at as far as the performance. But here's what I have to say though, from the normal use and playing games and things like that, this phone performed fairly well. So it was fast enough. It did what I asked it to do pretty much most of the time. And even playing games was just a good experience for the most part. Mainly the processor and the motherboard, they're on the top of the display. So on their top half of the phone. And here's the situation with that. So as soon as I turned on the phone and just messed with it for a few minutes, not even going into heavy demanding apps, just regular apps, it did start to get really quick at getting warm to the touch. So that was, I don't know if it's just my unit or that's just how it is, but that's just been my experience these past two weeks. And when I do push it and, you know, open up high demanding apps, it did get a little bit warmer to the touch, but nothing to the point where it was really uncomfortable. So just keep that in mind. I really think that's just because of the fact that it's just a thin device when it's, you know, folded open. But again, I just wanted to make sure that I shared that with you guys. And the other thing that I want to discuss is this. The overall experience from using this phone for the most part was a very enjoyable experience. I really wasn't, I, I can't get mad at this phone because it just, it did its job and it did it well. So me using this phone as a daily was kind of eye-opening at a glimpse of the future. And when I titled my my video, my previous video on the Motorola Razr and said it, it, this phone just brings in a big change, here's what I meant by that. Usually the foldable phones when they first started in the market, they started at $1,000 and up. This phone here, I know it starts at around $700, but you can find it cheaper with the deals that they have going on right now. And that's honestly, if you're trying to get into that market, it's a killer value. And I feel like Motorola just paved the way for other companies to go ahead and bring in the foldable market to a whole new demographics, which is really great to see in 2023 and pushing to 2024. So with that being said, let me know what you guys think of this phone. And my question is this, would you be interested in investing in this phone? If so, let me know in the comments below and I will catch you guys in the next one. Thank you for watching.